amazing singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. Check, check. Hey, 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 hey. One, two. I can hear you. I can see you and I can hear you. <laughs> hey, I had to come to Missouri, man, for some uh, some good internet. Some um, internet. Hey, <laughs> what's up, everybody? Justin Moore here, along with my pal, my buddy, my TM, the handler, JR. Welcome into another episode, uh, season three, episode three of the Justin Moore podcast. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic week and have thought out a little bit. Uh, if you, like me, have been in the frozen tundra that is known as the South over the last week or so, and hopefully you enjoyed the last episode with our buddy Austin Dillon, driver of the number three car. Um, fun to catch up with him, and uh, we got a great show for you today. We're catching up with... Um, I don't want to say brand new artist because she's been around for a, a, a while, but uh, catching up with uh, our tour mate from this past year uh, when we did get to tour, Miss Laney Wilson. So yep. look forward to that, and hopefully you guys do too. Jr., what's up, buddy? Man, I've been over here rocking this new Laney Wilson record this morning. Um, talk to her about that here in just a little bit on the Zoom machine. But, man, I'm good, buddy. It's uh, – sun's finally broke down here. It's 70 degrees in paradise again, and I'm uh, – it rained last night. I'm loving it. Reese's out of town. Her and Lola went back to Homa for a few days. So, uh, it's kind of weird being at the house by myself. Don't say uh, you're loving that. You'll be in trouble. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm missing them, to be honest with you. It's kind of weird. I, I was thinking the other day, it's going to be weird when I go back out on the road. I'm so used to seeing everybody every day. I – I was talking to somebody this weekend. I was just like, you know, imagine if you just had to stop your job for a year or 18 months or something, something you've done for 20 years. I mean, you not that you don't for, not that you forget anything. It's just you get a little rusty. You lose a little bit of muscle memory on some of this stuff. So I actually um, I actually got to get a little taste uh, the night before last myself. I went to Mobile to see our buddies Randy Hauser and Jamie Johnson play an acoustic show at the Sanger Theater in Mobile. Uh, went with some buddies of mine and saw some old buddies from the Wayne days, and it was good to get back out and about and uh, go to a show, uh, go to Mobile. Hadn't been to Mobile in a while, so had a good time down there. Great show. It was just Jamie and Randy, two guys, two acoustics. Of course, no, no frills, no thrills, no light show, no nothing. They just walk out there and go. And uh, that's and the way it, it ought to be with those two, man. Yeah, it's, they're just they're so good, and I'm sure. Well, we haven't even talked about the show. You sent me a couple of clips, but. Um, of uh i think it was jamie singing in color but uh it sounds good as ever and yeah man i tell you what that song just never gets old none of none of either of their songs ever get old but um i'm sure it was great to get back out there and to your point about um i guess the the concern over being a little rusty you know even the couple of shows that we've done this year or this past year rather you know we were both a little nervous because it's it's once you get out there and do it it's like riding a bike right you know which we both agree on that uh but there's some apprehension for sure yeah. leading into it you're going man i don't know if i don't know if i remember how to do this and then you know we get done with the show and we go yeah man this is what we we're made yeah. to do you right. know that's what we were born to do so yeah i'm glad you got to go to a show i'm did you get to uh catch up with those guys Oh yeah, yeah, it was good. Got to uh, kicked it with Randy for a little bit before the show, then went and hung out on Jamie on the bus for a while after the show. I was gonna say, here's my uh, my pass, boy, big big elaborate pass there, there for Jamie. <laughs> just just him and a guitar and a purple pass with his name. I love but, it. But uh, but I yeah, so it. it was good to catch up with him. Randy said yes, he he wants to come on the podcast, talk to Jamie about it. But uh, I don't know if we talk, I think we talked about this off air last week. Jamie's tour manager is one of my best buddies. He's probably my first call if we're out on the road as far as other TMs. Uh, wally and um i was asking him i was like you know i need to get the beard we call him the beard i said we got to get the beard on the podcast i said i know we don't do much of that stuff and we don't really either but it, this would be perfect for him and uh he's been flying so i got to talk to jamie a little bit about that he's got this pilot's license so all throughout quarantine he's he said he's flown about four or five days a week every week since quarantine happened as long as weather's permitting and I mean, he's gotten bigger too. He's a big old burly joker. He looks like Santa Claus's <laughs> little brother right now. And I'm thinking, damn boy, I got to wide them doors on an airplane for you, Hoss. Jamie and, uh, Claus. Yeah, Jamie Claus. But uh, but he said he's just loving it. He said he's eat up with it. It's his new passion. You That's know, he cool. 
yeah, he don't really party no more, and uh, that's just his thing he's focused on. And uh, so, but he uh, he said his if he can. We're going to get him on here, basically, long long story short, and his long, drawn-out way of saying uh, yes, he uh, he said he would. So, we're going to get I, him. But, yeah, it was, I, it was, I, it was I, good. I, I reckon maybe I, I – What time here. you want me. <laughs> you know? But, uh, but yeah, it was good. And, like I said, I, you know, I drank about, I don't know, 40 uh, natural lights it felt like but i but i was but i was Natty smart Light. yeah i was smart they only did a few shots i took i was really really by the time i got back to my buddy's house at three in the morning i was like i'm so happy with myself i did not i didn't show my ass i didn't get too drunk i didn't spend all my money i didn't lose anything so sharice is gonna be so happy with me <laughs> did reese go with you no no i flew solo Oh, so gosh. another well, reason that is know, that <laughs> is impressive then because you know you didn't, she, I'm worried yeah. the whole time I'm like God I cannot like, get her mad at me for whatever this and that's part of it too you know when you're on the road and you're going and going and you get your routine down and you get your sea legs under you it's, it's kind of routine but you know I've taken a break from all that so I'm like well, you know if, if six or eight beers gonna just next thing I know I don't remember what's going on but uh, well, I'm glad I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you were able to go and and pull the reins back and not have to uh pull your shirt off and tell people what country music is i mean you were at a show where you didn't have to explain that to people no, i, no I would say that probably needed. that probably helped a little bit but uh yeah. anyway again um hopefully you guys are as excited as we are to talk to laney wilson she's got a new album that just came out um she was actually on tour with us on the late nights and long next tour uh that we were really kind of finding our sea legs uh last year uh really about this time actually jr yep. and yep uh it was us and tracy lawrence and and laney wilson and we were kind of all finding our our footing so to speak and and then the world changed <laughs> hopefully not forever but at least for a long time and <laughs> and uh we i haven't i haven't spoken to her since then but uh, she's got a new album come or that just came out rather and yep. uh, i was actually reading some reviews earlier getting really good reviews so that's exciting and i believe if i'm not mistaken jr it's her debut album yeah her first full length uh, uh major label debut she's put out a couple of eps and she did some stuff when she was younger but uh this is her first uh album out with broken bow put out for her, so which uh, is just a huge accomplishment for yeah. for for an artist i mean regardless of how long you've been doing it when you when you get to do it in that capacity for the first time and you got the the machine behind you it's it's just super super exciting and um you know i hate it for her that it's during this strange time but uh kudos to her and her team and uh, her record label um which we know a lot of people over at broken yep. bow um yep. for for getting that done in such odd you know yeah in such an odd timing situation etc so right. and i'm sure she's really excited about that yeah. so we'll talk to her about that well yeah she's on here now she's chimed into the zoom machine let's welcome her to the podcast now see if we can get some audio and video go there she is ladies and gentlemen wel welcome to the podcast probably the countryest guest we've ever had our little country cousin from louisiana miss <laughs> laney wilson hey about it girl what's going on uh, can you What's believe up? all three of us hillbillies can get all this working and we're in different places with computers and this I mean, is crazy this is, just amazing. This is crazy know, and right? like you said we probably don't need a damn translator yeah right. <laughs> we need an adapter kit oh my gosh yeah. how are y'all i'm good good to doing see good i mean it seems like good is a relative term these days but uh miss being on the road as i'm sure you are um it's just I mean, the, we were just talking, the world has just changed, hopefully not forever, but it certainly has been for a long time, and, and uh, I was I was just talking about the fact that your new album uh, just came out, and you're first on a major label. Yep. Uh, I know you've put stuff out in the past, but it's just, it's such an exciting time for an artist uh, to get to do that, mm -hmm. whether it be your first album or your 10th album or whatever, and for, for you guys to, to do it and accomplish that throughout this strange uh situation and time uh is, is wow. pretty exciting and i but i do hate it for you that you don't get to go i know do what you normally get to do you know i know uh, but you know what i kind of feel like you know we were waiting for everything to kind of open back up and stuff but i was like you know what people need music right now 
let's just do yeah. the dang thing, put it out there. You know, this record's been done for a while, and um, man, it's been a crazy, crazy year for everybody. But I, I truly do feel kind of like the time and the time feels right. Yeah, well, that's exciting. So, I'm. I probably know the answer to this because I've done it so many times, but, uh, or I, 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 I digress, but, um, you probably played these songs that are on this album for what, 10 years or something. Oh my God. For a long time. Yes. I mean, I've been writing <laughs> yeah. for this thing. I mean, really like, it feels like my whole life, you know, I mean, yeah. we, uh, we dove in head first. I mean, we kind of dwindled it down to about 200 songs and then got it down to about 50. And then these were the ones that really just kind of, you know, raised their hand. And we decided actually that we were going to, um, you know, the name of the record was saying what I'm thinking. And we were like, let's make sure that every single song on here is saying what I'm thinking. So we asked ourselves the question, like whether it was dirty looks or things a man ought to know, it had to be saying what I'm thinking, which kind of made it a lot easier. And yeah. a lot more fun too. I, I will say that was part of uh, one of the reviews. I think it was it was Taste the Country or the Boot or something I was reading, and that was one of the specific things that they said. That they said the name of the album, which yeah. saying what I'm thinking. You just said, um, and it specifically said it, yeah. what you just said about it. So when you have you know the critics agreeing with your thought process, that's that's got to be pretty exciting. I've I've Never really looked at the critic stuff because they usually. Oh, I'm telling you right now, look and look. I got to stay right. off TikTok too because there's some mean people on there too. Oh, Lord. I mean, well don't, oh, well, don't stay off Instagram and stuff. I know last night I was watching some of your videos, put up your little skits with your girls all talking, spinning the gossip around. Now I had to go back watch it twice. Now that was good look, stuff. I make my family want to crawl underneath the rock. They're like, Laney, damn. <laughs> Did I, speaking of that, you know, I met your mom. We were out on the road. She came to a few shows. Did I say you got her to jump on some gang vocals on one of the tracks on this album? You did say that. So let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you what happened. See what had happened was, <laughs> so my mama, y'all, she cannot sing. I'm talking about like, she's the loudest one in church, but, and I'm like, it sounds like my wife. Oh my God. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm like, mama, stop. She's like, I'm not singing for you. I'm singing for the Lord. I'm like, well, the Lord would even be offended. Please, God, stop. So, <laughs> but we were we were doing this record, and Jay was like, we need some female gang vocals. And he was like, isn't your mama in town? And I was like, yeah. And he said, well, see if she'll drop by the studio. So she got to have her few minutes of fame, and she is so tickled she made it on to Neon Diamonds. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Very wanted to cool. talk about songs on there. Uh, things a man I don't know. You, you know, you said you played them for a while. You were playing that out on the road. And I remember we first met. I think in Baltimore, your band opened for us at a, a show out there in the oh. Power and Light District or something. And um, we all met backstage, had a few cocktails and all that. And then y'all went up there and ripped it up. I remember telling our band guys, I "Was like y'all got to come see this girl's the real deal." And Thank I remember you, from that night on and ever since, when you'd play that man on, it about had me teared up here early. That is just a. <laughs> I mean, I like the whole record. The record sounds great. Jay Joy's phenomenal producer, all that stuff. But the that song itself, to me, is just, Thank I you. mean, it just hits me right there with all them feels. It's like a, almost like a, 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 a Riley Green's grandpa song. I mean, it's oh, just one of those man. that. That means a lot. Almost like an ant for me, and I, I'm I kind of stick to the older country. I like older everything. I like older rock. I like older rap. I like older country. I like older jazz. But that kind of goes back to that throwback '90s '80s style stuff, and and just the message, and uh, it makes sense. A man ought to know those kind of stuff. You, you dang know? right. Nowadays, do you do you know all of it? Most of them now. <laughs> most of them. There's a few <laughs> I want to add to the list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we we both can we can hook a hitch up now. We can get a few things done. I'm gonna tell you right now, there's some boys around here that uh uh-uh. uh. Look, I, I, I had bet. a band at one time, and I let them drive my truck and trailer to the venue where we were playing in Louisiana. And I didn't ask them before I hired them if they could drive a truck and trailer. Turns out they couldn't, and they ran it through a parking a Starbucks parking lot and slid the entire trailer down the front of somebody's car. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, you just assumed they would. If you can't even drive one going forward, you're in real trouble. (laughs) I mean, much less going backwards. (laughs) But you know what? I mean, at the end of the day, that's all great. You can YouTube anything, but uh, it ain't about that. It's just about having good character and about treating people the way that you want to be treated. Well, I mean, to to that point, I mean, you – 
we have a babysitter for our kids uh, who's a great friend of ours, but she always tells the kids, be your own sugar mama. Uh, so, you know, we have three daughters. We have a son, but we have three daughters, and, you know, I'm trying to teach them all kinds of things like that. Even my wife had a, a, a blowout recently, and I changed her tire, and I had – all my kids, all my daughters out there watching me do that. And they're, you know, they're 10, 9, and 6. And they're going, what, what, what in the world is dad doing? But they'll remember that. And, you know, I'll have to show them again. But, yeah, you know, when they start driving, oh, God help us. Oh, my uh, God. You know, they're going to know how to change their own tire. That's right. I mean, and that's, that's the very, that's the scratching the surface of the things that they are to know. And so that's exactly uh, how my daddy was. I mean, he, yeah. it was just me and my sister. There were no boys. And, um, he was just bound and determined that we were going to know, you know, know some things. Like before I moved up to Nashville in my camper trailer, he had me weaving in and out of the dang pine trees in the yard <laughs> 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 to make sure I knew what I was doing. I didn't really, I somehow faked it and got away with it. But, um, yeah, I'm not saying I can do all these things good. I mean, I can do it, but <laughs> yeah. Hey, at least you so, try for effort. At least you tried. There you go. Yeah. Be your, like 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 uh, Miss Amanda, our our babysitter. Be your own sugar mama. I like. She's that. like she's she's always like you know I I I love having a man, but I don't need one. That's right. And so that's it. you know so. I mean, but, yeah, uh, it's nice to get your back scratched every now and then, but I can do everything right. else. <laughs> exactly, you can do it all yourself. And so it's uh it's funny. I've kind of learned that by having daughters. You know that that they they can dang sure do anything. Uh, 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 I can do, or anybody else can do. So, and they, I love that. they're um, they're all they like to dress up and look pretty in the princess dresses and all that. But they're more tomboyish, I guess. They they're they're all way into sports. They play softball and basketball, and I coach them. And um, that's so sweet. Which we we all love. But uh, I kind of and correct me if I'm wrong. I kind of take you as as that type I, uh, yeah. as well i don't know that i'm just i'm from the outside perspective for sure yeah no i can dress up and do the whole girl thing and then i mean when i need to get down and dirty i can do it too um that's right you know best of both worlds really my mama she's so is always that, go ahead is that because of how and i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt oh, you're you. good man is that because of how and where you grew up exactly i guess yeah you know i'm from northeast louisiana um out. Damn near Arkansas. I know. Yeah, y'all everybody. aren't far from each other, I don't think. No, I don't think we are. I'm like Monroe. Like, I'm about 30 miles south of Monroe. See, it, it, for folks out there listening, Kate, my wife, has been on this podcast a few times, and and she's from Louisiana as well. I think you and I may have discussed that while yep. we were out on tour. Um, but she's from way down south. She's from like 50 miles south of New Orleans, as as is JR's wife. But um, uh Laney and my wife sound nothing alike. Nothing. Laney sounds more like I do. I know. JR does. Everybody thinks I'm from yeah, Arkansas. It's, it's it's a whole different it's a whole different world from I would say the north north half and the south half of of Louisiana. That's about the breaking point. You know, I ten. Yeah, north of north of I ten and south of I ten. About Baton Rouge yeah. down is kind of where it starts changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it really yeah. is wild. Because Laney sounds country, but our wives they got that they got a whole other. I don't know. They, they just always sound mad. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, every time I say I'm from Louisiana, everybody expects me to be Cajun. They're like, there's yeah. no way you're from Louisiana. you got to be from Arkansas. Right. I'm like, why well, might as well yeah. be? It's a whole well, different yeah. culture, though. I mean, it really is. Yeah. But uh, talk about it where, where you grew up a little bit. Yeah. I, I interrupted you with that whole oh, jargon. Did, but. I, so, like I said, I'm from a little town called Baskin, and now every dang time I say Baskin, everybody thinks of Carol. <laughs> uh, and you wear and you wear a lot of print stuff. And you wear I, a lot of animal print. Yeah, and I'm wearing leopard. <laughs> Damn, I gotta quit doing that. <laughs> Carol Baskin. <laughs> so, um, yes, from I mean Baskin is population 300. We don't even have a we got a blinking light. That's about it. Um, I grew up on a farm. My daddy farms wheat, corn, soybeans, oats. Um, we've got horses, and so I just I grew up outside. Uh, my mom was a teacher. Got one sister. I really truly think that my love for storytelling kind of came from there not being a whole lot to do, and us just sitting around the kitchen table and literally just hearing them same old stories. You know, and the ones that kind of get better every single time you hear them. And um, yeah. 
I wrote my first song Big at Fish nine. Stories. Oh my gosh, yes, they just get bigger and bigger. <laughs> I'm gonna tell yep. you right now, my daddy is the world's worst. <laughs> I'm like, okay, now <laughs> chill out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, I was there when it went down, and now I hear you tell the story. I'm yeah. like, I don't think that's exactly how no. it went down. Look, one time he was telling the story about him getting thrown off a horse, and he was like, and it threw me about five feet. The next time I heard the story, he's like, it threw me about ten feet. <laughs> next thing you know, it's gonna be all the way to the dang windmill. Quit now. <laughs> so, so does your sister hate you for being famous? Uh, famous country music star no she's like oh my gosh maybe i'll finally get a, a good christmas present <laughs> <laughs> i'm an only child so i never had to deal with that but i it would have to be i mean i'm sure i would be happy for my sibling if i had one but it would have to be kind of uh yeah. a learning curve for for your family i know it was for sure. mine and i don't even have siblings but my i remember coming home yeah, the first tour one of the first tours i ever did was luke bryan had just he had one one or two, he had his second single out, and I had my first one out. Yep. So that's how long ago this was. But he he and I were talking. Mm -hmm. He was like, every time I go home to Georgia, my mom and dad have like 30 things on the kitchen table for me to sign. And he finally was like, Dad, I ain't doing this no. I'm coming home to come home. Don't like, tell nobody I'm coming home. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, but I grew up in a town like you. Yep. Um and so my parents are the same way. They're like, obviously they're my biggest fans, which I very much appreciate. But I, at, at one point, it, you know, you, you get to, a, a, you get to a point rather where you go, okay, dad, like, yeah. I just want to come home and eat dinner with you. Yeah. Like you got to stop just... promising all this stuff when I come home and now I live there. So it's no big deal. But anyway, I, I don't know if you've experienced that, that, but I would, it's I would be sure that you probably have. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you know, people will stop by the house and there's, a, you know, I mean, that's just how my house has always been. People were just always there in and out neighbors and, you know, and, um, but there's definitely been a few times where I'm like, daddy, mama, if y'all tell anybody <laughs> I'm coming home, I'm going to whoop y'all. I ain't coming. I ain't right. coming. I just yeah. want to hang out with them. You know, I don't, I don't get to see them a whole lot. And I just, you know, want to soak it up and, and also just kind of turn it off. You know, it feels nice yep. to just kind of remove yourself from, you know, just being in a spotlight just for a second and, and really just, you know, just being. Yeah. Yeah. Do they, they still live in, in Baskin? They do. They do. I don't think they're going to be leaving. Maybe one yeah, day once daddy retires, more. maybe they'll, you know, spend a little more time up here, but yeah, they're going to be there. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's like you and go, go ahead. ahead. Jess. No, it's all well. Clear. I was going to say uh, the the cool thing though. I mean, the other side of that coin. You know, people are excited, but you know, I live now back home where I grew up, and I grew up again in the same type place as you. Like, I think the population's two seventy or something like that. So exactly the same. Yep. On a farm, the whole bit. And my wife and I chose to move back there. 10, 11 years ago when we had our first daughter. And um, it's been really good for, for me as an artist and as a person. And I think the happier you are as a person, the better you are as an artist, obviously. Oh, um, man. But pe people, and I, I'd be curious to know if it's the same for you. People back home that knew me growing up, taught me as a kid or coached me in basketball or whatever, um, they're proud for me and proud of me, but they don't really care. Yeah. Like they're happy for me, but they're like, oh, hell, that's just Justin. Yes. Which is one of the greatest things about me being back home. And I, I wonder if it's kind of the same for you when you go back there. If people are like, that's awesome, but they still want to talk about, yes. you know. No, it really is whatever. that way. The people that I like grew up around, you know, it's really just kind of like we pick, like they don't really even talk about music with me. It's kind of just like right. we just pick up right where we left off, you know. And that is the cool part about going home. And I would eventually love to love to have a little place back home and be able to, you know, one day years from now, raise my family, just kind of live in the same life, lifestyle that I did. Because um, right. I want them to learn some stuff. I want them to, you know, play in the dirt and stuff like that. Things a man and a woman ought to know. That's right, damn That's it. Right. 
<laughs> I always, I always thought it was cool. Justin, one of his things, because I was like, well, you know, you could have just, you know, bought you some land outside of Nashville like everybody else does that moves there and, you know, makes a career and your kids and that. And he said, which I thought was awesome and always stuck with me, he said, uh, you know, there's a, a blackberry bush or blackberry vines that run along this fence by my parents' house that I used to go out there and pick blackberries with my grandmother. And he's like, I want my kids to go pick blackberries there wow. with, with their grandmother. That, you know, and yeah. I always thought that 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 sums it all up right there, because yeah. I can because I can feel like same thing with, you know, doing stuff with my grandparents and 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 or on the lake where I grew up, and just thinking, yeah, that's that's, that's it. That, it, it. It hits, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it runs right. It literally is the fence. It, now my wife and I own the property. Uh, but wow. It run it runs the fence row between my parents' house that I grew up in, which they still live in, which is a thousand yards at the most oh my gosh from my my front door which at times is a little too close but when you have four kids it's nice to have nice to have the babysitter nearby you're right you're <laughs> so, right but um and, and sadly my grandfather is really ill right now and probably not gonna make it much longer um but that's the that's kind of brings it all to the forefront for me that it, this is why I moved back here and you know, and you mentioned, you know, being able to get away from what we do is is undoubtedly one of the greatest jobs on the planet. And it's what we love to do. And it's we're so passionate about. Yep. But at the same time, it's it's stress filled. There's no doubt about that. It's it's very difficult. A lot of stress on you. Um, so to be able to um, have a safe place to go to away from all that and just completely detach yourself from all that is I think important. Yeah. And I mean, and too, for me, sometimes that's kind of hard to do because like, I mean, I'm sure like you, like I, I love my job. I love doing this. Um, but it's not healthy to be in it all the time. You got to be able to shut your brain off and go do something else because I mean, my gosh, I mean, I don't know how radio tour was for you, but especially radio tour for me was just so it woo. miserable. <laughs> I'm so, telling you. So the, here's the thing, though. You did radio tour the old school way, if I'm not mistaken, like flying around all over the place, playing in conference rooms to two or three people eating pizza that could care less if you were there or not. Just yes. Right. Look, looking okay, at the phones, so, just like texting while I'm playing. I'm just, yes. Yeah, so brightest, that's brightest lights ever above you. <laughs> so that's the way, just you and your guitar. That's the way I did it. Um, and that's the way it's always been done. But nowadays with COVID, these younger artists, I think are getting off pretty easy. I know. I'm like because mad Because they just do it in told. their house over Zoom. And I'm like, Man, y'all have no idea dragging your guitar through airport after airport after airport and three, four flights no a day clue. and two, three different airports a day I, and ho nasty motel, not hotel rooms and the whole bit. Oh, so, I've been giving them hell. Yeah. I'm like, uh-uh, it don't count. It don't count. <laughs> yeah, no, they got to go back and do it the old school uh -uh. way. You know what? Yeah. And I'm interested, too, to see, like, if it actually does go back to that way or if it will just kind of continue doing this. I don't know. I'll tell you yeah, what. No, the it's it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt, for yeah. sure. And wear sure. and tear on people. I don't know. I, I'm I'm with you, Laney. I don't know. I, I'm interested to see if it does go back to full blown that. But with uh, you know, it's just evolution, and things are going to happen. Technology. Yep. You know, when I got in the business, everybody in the van didn't even have cell phones. I mean, yeah. we used to have to stop at the. We had to stop at the payphone to call the club to make sure somebody was there to let us in to load in. Dang, you know, Jr. The, you old. You old. Well, I mean. <laughs> You know, I, I started when I was 21, 22. I'm 41 now, so 20 years basically in the business. And, you know, we had to have the big Rand McNally Atlas out and flip to the state you were in. And I had the old one my grandma from Jackson, Mississippi gave me. It had little uh, little notes out to it to different states that I was, you know. Hey. So, but, uh, but hey, so I'm going to be totally unprofessional for a minute. I got to call my wife to get a charger brought down to me. <laughs> Laney, we're not at, I'm not at my house. We're actually on a couple's vacation oh, right cute. now skiing. That's oh, why I look like. Like a, a a thief. Oh shoot! Uh, thing, it's cold. Well, and that's well, why his uh, internet works good. Yeah, that's why my internet actually good internet. works though. I, I don't work back home, but my, I'm surprised my mine's computer working charger, right now. <laughs> I, I can't, my computer's about to f go out. So. Yeah, but they uh, so they they were supposed to go last week. Uh, it was the first time they were going to get off without the kids to go on a little couples trip up to Missouri, which I didn't even know Missouri had a ski resort. I didn't either because they he, he's done got I don't they know they got one. 
Well, he got, well, he'll, oh, he'll Billy Moore. He went, he went to Colorado one time, and next thing you know, he's uh he's world ski champion over here. He wants to go every time we get near some snow. He's looking for a mountain. So they were supposed to go up there last week, but then obviously snow mageddon happened. Oh so they gosh. got shut down, and our bus was stuck on the way trying to go get them. And we so y'all got play- a, y'all got a bunch of snow. Yeah, that Justin them did. Okay. Yeah, I'm in I'm in South Alabama. I moved back to Gulf Shores. My oh, wife I remember and I down that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did 12, 12 years in Nashville, but I'm here. But he's still in Arkansas. Yeah, I think they had the most in his county of the whole state. Yeah. So Laney, I, you know, we talked about how we grew up kind of in the same area. Yep. Um, I mean, pretty much. Probably not, oh, but 100, 150 miles apart, I would think. Did you? Did your folks, did y'all have it bad back in Louisiana? Yes. Lainey, did y'all get, did they lose power and all that stuff? Um, They didn't lose power. My sister lost water just because they're living in an apartment complex, her and her family right now, because they're in the process of moving. And there were, like, apartment complexes, like, roofs were falling in because, you know, they weren't, uh, they weren't yeah. prepared for <laughs> as much ice, nobody. you know? And, yeah, nobody. But, um... Yeah, my- my grandmother up in Jackson, same thing. Ice got on the Hi, tree limbs and broke the power line. Hey, you did you get to meet? I don't Sorry, know. Excuse the way I look. Um, I, I think we met briefly. I think we met briefly. Uh, Good to see. Lu- she came to a show in Louisiana, but yes. she got the flu that day. I, I don't, know. Yeah. I know. You were feeling so, so bad. But uh, for those out there listening, not watching, uh, my wife is here. She had to save the day with the. Uh, computer charger as always <laughs> thank you for that right. she's from louisiana also oh yeah but yeah that's part. true yeah yeah but you're cajun and i'm not i wish i was and i just sound like your husband <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm glad y'all made it on two your... different worlds <laughs> yeah i'm glad y'all made it to the mountain mama kate finally. are you so happy very happy finally we made it sorry i'm pushing you over <laughs> uh did, did y'all go skiing awesome. yet why does that go? i was in the Going shower and stuff, you were like, run down. That's all right. Okay. Oh my gosh. Good to see you, girl. Bye. Bye. See ya. (laughs) Shut up. She keeps him in line. If I can't get him to do nothing, Laney, I have to. I have to side text Kate. I'm like, all right, he ain't responding. All right, Kate. Hey, Laney, we take care of business for me. We've had like. Race car drivers, bunch of artists, coaches, all these people on the podcast, and everybody wants to wants. She's the most requested because she gives me the most shit. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so, I love it. But <laughs> somebody yeah, needs so, to. <laughs> yeah, I forget where we were in the conversation. Sorry, guys. But oh, what right. were we talking about? We're, we're oh, we were talking, talking about, about oh the snow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so we got the most snow in the history of our state. Wow! Like. Ever like, I, and I'm from the the beginning of the of South Arkansas. Yeah, so yeah. we even the northwest part gets a little bit, but we don't. Ever, I mean, every ten years, maybe. I know. I know. And so it was it was insane, and I hate it. Um, you know, I have a beach house down there by by Jr. And we spend as much time time down there as we can. I just I, I below seventy degrees. I'm not happy. Oh, I'm telling you, man. Look, so, when the snow when the ice started happening here which was last Sunday evening, I was at my band leader's house just taking my precious time, thought I was going to be good. I get going out of his driveway, and I start going up a hill. Y'all, I slid down the entire hill. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I was, like, crying. I was, like, this is how it's going to end. This is how it's going to end. Damn. So, do you have a four-wheel drive? Well, I was in my car. I wasn't in my truck. I don't know why. And I'm front-wheel driving my car. Well, that, they gotcha. say that's actually better. Well, I remember somebody wasn't, telling me that good. one time. It didn't help that day, huh? <laughs> yeah, I remember when I first moved to Nashville, and the first time we had a real good snow. Like, I remember my brother was in town visiting. He was looking at some schools there. He was still in college, going to go back and finish up some stuff. But uh, we were somewhere in town, and it started snowing. And us two, he'll be look at. We thought it was a blizzard. I mean, because we had never seen so much snow except for maybe being in Gatlinburg or something. So we were like freaking out. We were like, we need to go get some milk. You know, we didn't know what to do because you know, I was still young. We weren't really worldly then. And uh, I just remember thinking, man, Nashville is like New York or something. Man, uh-huh. they, get, they get real yeah. blizzards up here. Oh you know? my gosh, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so are you have you been in Nashville throughout this whole thing? I have. I um I did yeah. go home to Louisiana a few times and 
it's been good. Like, my sister had a baby. Um, well, golly, I guess he's about to be two now. But, like, I was right. there for him to, uh -huh. you know, when he first walked and stuff like that. So, it's been cool to be home for moments like that when, you know, most of the time we probably wouldn't be home. So, um, yeah, and I've got to go home and, and ride my horses and do stuff like that. But I will tell you, I mean, I've been staying pretty dang busy during this time. I'm yeah. like, I don't know where my time's going. I'm doing something. But... <laughs> I'm sure since the album just dropped last week, I mean, I'm sure you got all kinds of stuff going on moving forward, yes. you know, it's been releasing wild. that. I bet. I'm sure you got stuff. Yep. I know I was talking to Mandolin earlier, and she said you got an afternoon full today, and the rest of the week you pretty much, your calendar's pretty, pretty, but that's good, you know, like I said, good, good to be doing something. You're right. Um, what, uh, I know, I know, like I said, you've got a lot of any cool stuff you want to talk about on as far as album stuff coming out, anything more that we don't oh, know? Shoot. Or oh. shows? Do you, do you have any show? Do y'all, I know we've got some was April, May too. starting to pop yeah. up, but do you got stuff like that too? Um, yeah, so <clears throat> a couple, um, Coming up, I'm hoping they actually stick. I know, I think we'll really kind of start getting into the swing of things. Like, I see a bunch of dates back to back in June. So, right, same here. hopefully yeah. that, we'll see. Um, yeah. People ask me about it, and I'm always like, I see dates, but I don't even want to talk about it. Because every time leading up to this, they've gotten canceled a week or two out. Even, we were supposed to be in Jackson, Mississippi at the rodeo last uh -huh. Tuesday when the snowstorm happened. So, it's uh -huh. like... If it ain't, if it ain't COVID, it's a storm. We just can't go gig. So I just tell people, I was like, I'll let you know about a week or two out. If besides that, I just, you don't know. Just go you with know. the flow. Yeah. I, yeah, it's, and I know it's we've been, we're going to do some of the shows that we had to cancel with you and Tracy. Yep. Um, this year too. I was pumped to see some oh, of those man. start popping back yeah. up. We were so excited to be out on that tour. And I, I, oh, we I mentioned think. earlier before you came on that um, it was to me lining up to be, uh, uh, as much fun as I've ever had on on tour, you know, looking up to Tracy for so long um, and being such a huge fan of his, and then becoming friendly with him, and yeah. and um, and then I I was a huge fan of yours uh, when I was introduced to your music and the fact that we were able to get you out there, and it kind of felt like we were just kind of getting our bearings uh -oh. and getting our footing uh, oh, when all this crap happened. So, I mean, uh, it was a it was a huge moment for me too. I mean, shoot, I've been a fan of both y'all's for the longest time, so it was a honor for me to be able to be out there with y'all. And I tell everybody this all the time. We were when we talk about the tour, like how y'all would stand side stage and watch me. I'll be honest with you, like that was so incredible because most people don't do that. So that meant the world to me. Wow. And if I'm ever given that opportunity to headline a show. You can bet your ass I'm gonna be standing side stage just because. Wow, very cool. I was like, how it made me feel. I was like, dang, that like that meant the world. That's cool to hear. Very cool. And then I Tracy feel, sharing his whiskey with me. I was like, damn. That's yeah. Well, I was gonna say there, there's a there's a trick to get them to get over there and do that. That helps. You just got to set a little bar up stage left or stage oh. right somewhere <laughs> okay. on the stage. Okay. That definitely helps. Gets them off the bus. I said, like, well, we got plenty. We yeah, just go right here stage. after meet and greet and have one. Yeah. <laughs> So, no, I it love great, it. I lo yeah, great you shows know, I by everybody. I mean, man, it was fun. I know. I lo the very first time that Jr. and I actually met, and the the first time I ever headlined arenas ever. This was what twenty thirteen, Jr. Yeah, twelve thirteen somewhere in there, something like that. And um, we had Dustin Lynch was our middle act, and we had John Party was our opening act. Wow. For the folks out there listening. Uh, excuse this crazy sound going on. I'm not at my house. I'm skiing in Missouri. Um, and there's something happening. Uh, <laughs> probably one of my buddies taking a dump over here or something. Probably. Uh, but um, anyway, JR and I met, and I, I had made it a point to, because I've, I've had good experiences as an opening act and bad ones. Yeah. More good than bad. Yeah. But... Um, the first day of that tour, I wanted to meet John. And so I asked somebody to get in touch with his tour manager, which JR was at the time. And I came up on the bus and just said, Hey, and I was talking about his music and this and that. And, and this was before John had a hit record Yeah, and, and, but I tr genuinely was a fan. And, um, so JR, after coming to work for me, expressed how much that meant to yep. 
John and him and the band and the whole. So I always try to make it a point to to do that because I've been in, uh, you know, I've been in that situation oh on both sides of it. But, yeah, so, where you're where you're scared to look at them. Yeah, no, that's yeah. that's how it's that's how it should be. I mean, yeah, that honestly too, it just kind of like built my confidence, you know, to be like, okay, like like I can do this. Maybe one day I'll have that hey. opportunity. Hey, more than likely a few years from now, I'll be opening for you. So. Oh, you hush your mouth. You crazy. That's how it works. It's crazy. I'm getting old. I'm That's getting why old. I always say, be good, to, be nice, and be cool to everybody because you're going to see them on the way up and you're going to see them on the way down. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, we're waving yeah. at each other up and down. That's yeah, it. exactly. That's it. But, yeah, exactly. like you said, you know, you go on some of those, and even for me, I try to make sure everybody has a good time because I've been that, you know, when we were starting out with John, most everybody was great, but sometimes you go for somebody and they want to, you know, play jokes or, you know, just not be very cool. And it's a, it's more yeah. family that, and I, and I didn't come up that way. I came from the van and trailer days where at two or three o'clock in the morning, if you, something happened, you only had, you only had your other people yeah. that played music you could rely on. So That's right. we were always cool. So we all, Justin always stressed that, make sure all the openers and everybody has anything they need, you know, don't, you know, whatever they need, take care. We want everybody to have a good time. And, and, um, and yeah, and it was great, man. What a great tour! And I'm, like I said, I'm pumped because I said it when we first started the podcast. If we end that and never go back and do the tour with Tracy and Laney, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm gonna be pissed was, too. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, because that's my jam. We just got going. I got a new hat for the tour, a new pair of boots. <laughs> I didn't get to wear them in about two weeks. I was like, come on. Man. I know, so, I know. I'm tell. I just so. miss the road, y'all. I miss it. Yeah, I know. yeah. It's people ask me, have asked me through this a lot. You know, I bet you're. I bet you're loving all this time at home with your kids and that you normally don't have. And, and I, I mean, I am. I, I really am. And I, I feel like I've made the most of it. But at the same time, it's not as though it's been the most relaxing of times. Uh, you know, everybody's, you know, stressed and yes. worried and a- anxious and um, about yeah. the future and and so I've tried to make the most of it, but at the, at the same time, I, I've explained it to friends of mine like this. I'm just speaking for me, but I'm not fully myself without having that outlet. I'm just not. I literally said and, that yesterday. Like, I truly feel like a part of me is missing. Yep, exactly. I mean, I, I get to, I got to play the Opry a couple nights ago, and... That kind of lit my fire again, but I'll be honest, looking out in the crowd and seeing people, you know, with masks on, I couldn't tell they were enjoying it or not. Right. I was hoping they were smiling, <laughs> but right. but right. still, it did, like, it just does something for, to my soul. Yep. It's where I, f- I, I, I feel like as musicians or people who are on the road, whether you're on stage or you're backstage or whatever feel like we kind of have our own language Mm -hmm. in in a sense and we're kind of the only people who understand each other in a way and and so and jr and i've talked about this too we both played sports growing up and it's not it is being being on stage is where i feel the most comfortable in my life ever period end of story it's where i feel most comfortable for an hour or 30 minutes or two hours or whatever it is um but I really, honestly, more than even that, I miss the locker room, so to speak. Yeah. You know, like the the conversations right before we go on stage. We added a new song to the set list, and me and my band are both like, we're all nervous about, holy cow, I don't know if I remember how to do this. I don't yeah. remember if I remember this chord progression yeah. or or this lyric or whatever it is and those are the moments that you really really miss i know you know at least for us no same uh, i mean i miss being in a van full of stinking boys you know yeah right. farting and burping yeah and- <laughs> i would do it i'd do it in a heartbeat please god <laughs> yeah for sure sub well, subway at 2 a.m Oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it's like you said. I was—I don't remember who. It was actually this morning. I was talking to somebody about that. It's just different. Even if you've got friends that know, unless you're kind of in the road world, you don't really know. You can't really talk to anybody else about it. Yeah. Like I can't talk to just my friends about it because they just—it's just hard to comprehend what exactly it Perfect. is. You know, we're grateful and it's awesome and it's fun, but it's also the tough times and the t- days that aren't so great. But it, that makes it all worth it because you got to have a little bit of all of it, but. You know, you can't, 
you can't, you know, you can't talk to somebody else about, you know, well, catering in this town's great and this one's this and that. And they're like, what do you mean? I mean, it's just food, right? And I'm like, yeah, but if you go to a state fair somewhere and then volunteers got it and they don't use any salt, it's a little different than when you go <laughs> yeah. play a nice venue and you got a good cater, you know. Hey, a, pri- a prime example. So where we're skiing is, is very close to St. Louis. And there's an arena that we've played here, golly, the, 10 times or something over the years called Chaffetz or Chaffetz or something like that arena, downtown St. Louis. And we mm-hmm. went down there yesterday to get something to eat. By the way, we ate at some ridiculously awesome soul food place. It's got its own TV show and everything. And, oh, well. and I haven't eaten since. That was about 3 o'clock yesterday. That's how much I ate. But um, um, it's called Sweetie Pies. If you're in St. Louis, go to Sweetie Pies. But um, – Anyway, we were going by, and this arena is near Bush Stadium where the Cardinals play, and uh, my, a friend of ours was with us was pointing out uh, the arena. I go, oh, yeah, I've played there. And I literally I thought about – I remember the catering at that place, where it is, how you get to it, down this elevator. And that, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know when you pull in somewhere and you see the loading dock, you're like, I don't think I've ever played here. When you pull oh, in, yeah. and you see the where the bus is parked. You're like, Oh yeah, I remember yeah, this yeah. place. That's funny. Well, hey, I know you've got a ton to do today, Laney, but I wanted to rattle off a couple of uh, little things we talk about on here and a few little questions and that kind of stuff that we chit chat about and get your opinion on some of this. Let's do it. Uh, first one being we something they they rag my butt now on episode one of this new season because I guess I was the only person on Earth that hadn't started the show Yellowstone. Oh yet. my gosh. So I have since then, and I'm on season two, and it is awesome. And uh, I, I was going to get your opinion on. I, I know you 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 had music on yes, Yellowstone, correct? I have, yep, I've had three and songs on there so far. That's what I thought. I knew I knew you had a couple. I don't know if I've made it to all of them yet, but uh, yeah. So I got one but, in uh, season two, episode one, and then I believe season three, episode um, maybe two or three, and then uh, the finale of season three too. But it is such a dang cool show. I um, long story short, uh, a couple years ago, I had put out like a self titled EP, and it was before um before I had signed with Broken Bow, and WME had pitched uh, Yellowstone some some of my music. Well, Taylor Sheridan, the writer and the producer of the show, he took a liking to what I did, and um ended up putting one of those songs in there, and then reached out to me and asked me to come out to Las Vegas and do like a horse reining competition, and um just like come perform and stuff. And we yeah. really kind of hit it off and got to talking about horses and stuff, and because you know I grew up riding, and um we really just kind of developed a friendship. And he has been so good to me. I mean, like I said, he's put three of my songs in there so far. And it's really kind of introduced me and my music to a crowd of people who might not listen to radio or might not, like, you know, know how to download music, whatever, you know. Right. And so it's been it's been pretty awesome to, to see that. And, um, I mean, dang, the show is just unbelievable. Yeah, I had I had mixed emotions. They they kind of gave me a hard time after I watched half of the first season because I was like, yeah, I don't like, know. Uh-uh. It's just too many people getting killed. I say like, I I don't even know if I ever want to go back out west because I may just not. I might have I might ride the long black oh train by God. mistake. I know. Uh, I went out there in August to put on like a little private show for the cast and crew. And I'm not gonna lie, I was like, "Oh Lord, I hope they don't take me to the train station." <laughs> yeah, you kept, kept your eye kept your eye on Rip the whole time. Make sure you know where he's at. <laughs> you know? I love it. Uh, but but uh, but since then, I have I have, it's the same. I have just gotten to where I'm just enthralled. I can't. I stayed up way later than I should have last night to get a few extra episodes in. And uh, and yeah, as far as the music stuff on there, your stuff, Ryan Bingham, I've been a big fan for a long time. Stapleton's got some cuts on there. Uh, Whiskey Myers, uh, you know, it's just it, so you know. I've, I've really been digging digging the uh, the music on the show, which I knew that was a big part of it. So uh, that was really cool, and it's good to hear you on there. Thank you. I think Pat. we got more. We shouldn't have bragged about more internet it it squirreled out on him a little bit <laughs> let's see if he can get dialed back in on his- <laughs> just you back you got us i can hear you i don't know if i'm fully back I, as long as you, you can got hear me us. or no yeah I, we, we can, can hear, hear you. you you froze but we can hear you you got you got the so- thinking man sorry pose going on i've uh 
I don't know what's there going on. Uh, I mean, it's fitting that this is the least professional podcast in history since I'm the least professional professional musician to ever do it. So <laughs> I get it, ma'am. Um, yeah, I had some technical difficulties there. So yeah, the, sorry, Laney and Jr. The, the rolling theme for this show is high techs rednecks. <laughs> and now we lost tech. There he is. I. I, I I, g- I gather that y'all were talking about Yellowstone. Oh yeah, Laney's got three. Laney's got music on three different episodes. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's been pretty dang cool for sure. It's 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 one of the best shows I've ever seen. Jr's right. wrong about it. No. Um, he's coming around. Yeah, exactly. So all right, well, yeah, I got w- one more quick one I want to drop on. Just unless you got some, I had said I had one more question for Laney. We'll let cut her loose because I know she's got a bunch of other stuff to do. Oh hey, we good. You got one, Just. I was going to go with something we've we've talked about a lot during the last season or so, and um, we use it for different different subjects a lot of time. But it's the 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 classic Mount Rushmore, you know, Mount Rushmore of this or Mount Rushmore of that. And we started trying to do like a definitive Mount Ro- Rushmore of country music. Well, There's no way to do one that everybody's happy with. There's just too many greats, right. too many You're right. uh, you know eras to pull from, and this and that. So we've narrowed it down to where it's your personal Mount Rushmore of country music. Oh gosh. So, and we've talked about it, you know, like Justin's, you know, we had the argument like I'm I, Hank Williams has to be on mine and Justin yep. thinks Hank Jr. has to be on his more. And, and I'm like, well, okay. Jimmy Rogers got to be on there. And it's like, well, how do you put mm-hmm. Merle on without Waylon and this and that? And then I'm like, well, how does Dolly not make the cut? Oh, I, I know. Mean, she's arguably sold more albums than anybody. So if we had to ask our country cousin from Louisiana, Miss Laney Wilson, who is on her personal Mount Rushmore of country music, who does Laney have on there? Okay, how many of them's up there? Four. Four. Oh, Lord, it's going to be hard. Well, for sure, Dolly. She's yeah, got to. front and center for me. She's just such a huge influence for me. Um, also, Leanne Womack. I love me some Leanne. Um, I'll never forget where I was at oh, yeah. when I heard I Hope You Dance. Um, and I think I love Leanne so much, too, because she reminds me of Dolly. Yeah. Um, Oh, maybe maybe a little. I kind of see all y'all going down that same path. Real country girls that came to town end up having a big career. This could be the next one in I, there. I, Watch I, out. I hope you're right, damn it. Um, so, <laughs> let's see. Who I left. usually am. Hey, <laughs> speak it, manifest it. Um, yeah. Man, my daddy my daddy used to <laughs> always play. Um, man, what did he used to play all the time? Probably probably the most Buck Owens. So I also grew up listening to Buck Owens a lot. Um, That's a big one. And so, okay, Dolly, Leanne, Buck. Um, probably Hank Williams. That's interesting because Dwight, Yo- Dwight we- uh, Yoakam is on mine, which was heavily influenced by Buck Owens. Wow. Oh, yeah, Buck, that whole, yeah, Buck created a whole thing for everybody and basically kind of changed the way the whole game was done when he, you know, he bought all the radio stations yep. and – just did yep. his own thing, and, okay. and then Hee Haw. I mean, had to love Hee Haw, him and Roy. Yep, so that would be mine. That's mine right there. there. That's, a, that's a pretty strong lineup. So we've got Dolly Parton, Leanne Womack, Buck Owens, and Hank Williams. I mean, who who wouldn't pay to go to that show? That's what I'm saying. Come on now. Yep, yep. She, and, she, no and ladies and gentlemen, she's thinking what she's saying, by God. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you, Laney. We're gonna cut you loose now. I know you got a million stuff to do. You got our, you got my number if you ever yep. need anything. If you get back on the road before we do and need something, please holler at us. I if not, we're gonna come see you at a show. Uh, if not our own show, I'm gonna come see you at a show next time you're out and about. And uh, everybody, go to laneywilson.com and look for show dates. You can find all her music on there. You can find her Laney Wilson on all the social media platforms. And go download her new album. Say what I'm thinking right now, and I promise you, you won't be disappointed. And y'all use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast and the hashtag Laney Wilson when you send in questions and comments about this album because I want y'all to y'all tell me what your favorite track off is off. Laney's new album is I, I I like them all, but that man ought to know song just hits me right there in the field. So that that's my go to for now. But I'm interested to see what podcast land has to say about it as well. So thank you, I appreciate y'all so much for having me, and I can't wait to see y'all hug y'all's necks. It's gonna be a glorious day, my boys. Absolutely, tell your mama we sure enjoyed her backup singing oh. on that album. <laughs> I'll be sure to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't know if you guys I don't know if you guys can hear me because I'm still having trouble. But Laney, I just want to personally say thank you very much for doing this. I know you got a thousand things you could be doing, and for you to take some time out 
uh, oh, to do this is no. uh, very much appreciated and look forward to hopefully seeing you uh, in person uh, down the road very soon and getting to play some music together. I, I, and I wish you uh, continued success and, and you got a fan in me for sure. Thank you, man. man that means so much. I truly do appreciate it. And y'all have fun skiing. Go cut up them slopes. We'll try not to break something. Oh, yeah, don't, don't hurt do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Granny, you be safe, sugar. We'll see y'all Thank soon. Thank y'all. See ya. All right, bye. All right, there she was, ladies and gentlemen, one of the hottest rising female singers in country music today, Miss Lanny Wilson. And Justin's internet was working it would great. Not be the Justin Moore podcast. To the, and now it's back to being fine. It's fine now. It, was just it too, would not be the. I guess well, it's just too it's much country on one, one. It would not Zoom be the meeting. Justin Moore pod. It would not be the Justin Moore podcast without some technical difficulties. I say we take a quick break, Jr. Let me try to sort this out. You and I can um, go uh, take a pee. Yep, and um, and uh, we'll come back and talk about our visit with Laney and uh, a couple other things. Uh, we'll be right back here on the Justin Moore podcast. Stay tuned. The Justin Moore Podcast is brought to you by Founders Brewing Company, and their delicious all-day IPA is the second best-selling IPA in the country. Founders Brewing Company out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. They distribute their products nationwide. they got two tap rooms, one in Detroit and one there in Grand Rapids at their brewery. For more information, you can go to foundersbrewingcompany.com slash ourbeer slash all-day IPA. It's the perfect beer for any occasion. Thanks again for Founders Brewing sponsoring this episode of the Justin Moore Podcast. Hey, hey, hey. So, welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's JM, JR, and KM again. She wanted to uh, make sure she made another appearance because she's now dressed as a, a snow bunny or whatever you call it. Yeah, I got my new gear on. I got right, it here's slash. The camera if you want. Oh. I got it last year, but I'm finally getting to use it this year. Is it that's what you got to go to when you were going to go to Steamboat? You never got to go use. Yeah. So. Yeah, because because for people that don't remember us, we've talked about it on here before. The day we got shut down last year in Louisiana for COVID in March, they were going on a ski trip to Steamboat where they normally go the next week. Mm -hmm. that got canceled so now they're in st louis making up for it this <laughs> yeah. year so <laughs> hey, getting a few practice get, runs in yeah well you just got to make sure your outfit's on point too before you get back to the we boat we always you know? gotta look good yeah pink, you that's know. right pink camo whether you yeah it's like pink and gray camo pants you know gotta be styling now, on the slope you got your pig got your pigtails in too where justin can hold it and his between his fingers oh, yeah, and flip well, it. He's, he can still ski and uh, twiddle my hair at the same time <laughs> that's right it's his favorite pastime yeah <laughs> it's his nervous twitch. Yeah. I'm his security One of blanket. many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, he's self-proclaimed weirdo. I'm not going to, uh, you know, confirm oh, that I or am. deny no, that. No, he but, definitely uh, is. He yeah. is. Yeah. Very strange. Yep. All right. All right. Well, you look cute, Kate. I know it's going to be fun. Y'all be safe and don't let any of my godchildren get hurt, for God's sake. We got they ain't with us. Lately. It's the first trip Oh, that's right. kids yeah. in a year. Oh, that's right. That's what we're going to well, talk dang. about. Uh, oh, Lord. I don't know if the slopes can handle y'all too without having them to keep y'all in check. Snuggle time. Like, Snuggle time. <laughs> oh. now keep your hands to yourself when you're going up down that lift now. <laughs> Try to. Me and, Paparazzi me and Ross there. go on the same lift, so our hands are to ourselves. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Now, you and Ross keep your hands to yourself Wait, too. We did go tubing, and uh, they were meeting us. It, um, we're like, oh, there they come. They're coming down. And we kept looking. <laughs> we came they down together. They went together. <laughs> Everybody else went separately, and we're like, I thought Ross like had his legs like spread wide open. No, it was two humans. They were together. I, love I was it. like, y'all bunch of dumbasses. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, that way one could hold the beer and one could steer. You know, they, you had to, they figured yeah. it out. Get out so, of here. All right, bye. All right, y'all have fun. She's going to eat all a right. really healthy lunch. Her ramen noodles. Hey, speaking of lunch, I'm about to have the 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 new breakfast of champions for me over here. That is that would be an, a delicious all day Founders IPA. All from, day IPA. I, I, I got me one right here, fresh cold one. It got me a. They sent me a, a koozie to go around it too. So y'all get you a Founders Brewery all day IPA next time at the grocery store. I, they sell them at Rouse's. I saw them at Rouse's while I was there yesterday. Um, I've still got a good little stash, so I didn't re up yet, but I will as soon as my stash gets low. But I'll say thank you to those guys again. I know we mentioned them in our. Uh, uh, 
advertisement uh, segment of the <laughs> podcast. We took that break, but just want to say thanks again to them for uh, supplying us some cold beers and sponsoring the Justin Moore podcast this season. Yeah, no doubt, man. Appreciate those guys for for being a part of this and coming on board. And and uh, while we're giving out thank yous, thank you again to Lainey Wilson for joining us. And I apologize to her and you and our audience out there listening for the technical difficulties. Everything was rocking along. We were bragging about the internet speed, and then boom, here we go again. Um, but uh, hopefully Cody can do a masterful job at editing uh so that you guys are not dealing with it as much as we were but uh really great to have her on and yeah i think some pretty good perspective on um you know an artist from that's in a different spot in her career than than we are and maybe some that we've even spoken to at at this point you know brand new album just came out exciting um for her to say the least which we've mentioned um but uh, at the end of the day just like everybody else we've talked to and just like you and i have talked she just ready to get on the road man just like we all yeah. are <laughs> yeah know? i mean you could imagine if if this happened to you on your first big yeah, tour you were just, going out you know your first big tour first album on a major yeah. i mean it just sucks man but uh you know she's taking it in stride i'm proud for her for doing yeah, that she's awesome. she is a really sweet sweet person and and um uh, I have a lot of respect for her and yeah. her beliefs and what she stands for and, and, and her music, et cetera. So y'all go check out uh, yeah. com as JR mentioned uh, before we got her off of here. But uh, so, yeah, we um, I mentioned it before we got Laney on, but we came on a couple's vacation um, a few days ago. We're nearing the end of it now, but uh, – we're actually skiing. Uh, we enjoy skiing, so we left snow and ice to come to more snow and ice. Uh, I, I, I kept. I, I'm sure you voted for that. I, you know me. I kept pushing for the beach, pushing for the beach, and um, my wife was like, "Well, it's only like 60 degrees down there." I go, "Yeah, 60 would be like 90 to us at Compared this point." To 20. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, but I think things are finally thawed out at home. So when we get back there tomorrow evening, um, hopefully things are back to normal. I think it's 60 at home today. So nice. Um, that's that's more that's more like it for our winters. But uh, but yeah, uh, when we jump off here, I'm gonna go ski the rest of the day, and then we're actually, as you mentioned when Kate was on, we're going to Steamboat here in a few weeks because that's what we do every year. Um, and the trip that we had planned last March, we didn't go on. We had a year to use it. The, uh, the fee that we paid for the, the rental. Right. And so we got to go use it. So we're taking the kids on that trip, but gotcha. this is the first trip that we've taken since COVID hit without our kids, um, which we love being around our kids. I don't want anybody out there going, oh, what, he don't want to be around his kids. Everybody out there that's a parent knows that it's good to have an adult trip once a year or whatever the case may be. So we hadn't done it in an entire year. So here we are doing it. We're skiing in Missouri, which I didn't realize existed. But, you know, it's not, JR, to the cool level. Cool to know, though. Yeah, it's not, it's not to the level of skiing. And I'm now I'm a pretty experienced skier. Um, yeah. so everything out here is really, really super easy for, for me. Um, but some of the folks that we're with are, um, not as advanced, including Kate. And so it's, it's been really good for them, you know, um, yeah, for, for that reason. So to, well, like she said, to brush off the, you know, shake off the cobwebs, yeah, knock off the back. rust. Yeah, before you get back to the big one. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I'm glad y'all did. I know, like you said, you know, I can remember one time several years ago when uh, not long after I started working for you, um, we had Thomas Red out on tour with us before he uh, became a headliner himself uh, in his early days. And I can remember that year you had not taken a vacation, I think, at that point since Ella was born, maybe, just y'all. And y'all went out and met TR and his wife in Hawaii for a week. Mm-hmm. But I remember having to push y'all because we talked about this, and I think even your dad and everybody was like, no, it's okay, because y'all had just never left them 
at all yeah. and, and since Ella was born at that point. I don't know. That had probably been – she was probably six at the time. So Yeah, we probably – TR had a couple hits at the time. We, this was probably – 14, 15? Yeah, it's probably six, seven years ago, maybe. So he, yeah. Kate and I went with him and uh, Lauren and a couple, two or three other couples to Hawaii. And it was fun. We had a good time. It was, uh, yeah. But uh, parents. But you needed that. Yeah, parents. point is, you needed yeah, that. Yeah, par- you know? parents out there get it. I mean, you, you got to. I mean, I, I remember looking back, my parents went on a, a vacation or two a year by themselves without me. And, Mm-hmm. So yeah, Grand uh, Mom, our our thing was we'd go to Grand's or Grand would come get us, and then Mom and Dad could do whatever you know. Usually, right. and Grand would keep us for a month in the summer or whatever. So they could they could same. stay home, and and Jungle Jim could uh, make raw steak. Yeah, and right. duck breast, wreck, wreck his truck, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the day hey, deer, I don't know what hey. it is. I don't know what it's about deer. Deer always want to jump out in front of him. Hey, speaking of, uh, I won't name the name, but you know her, a uh, couple that's with us the wife she goes i gotta meet jr's dad i got to meet jr's dad because she listens to the podcast she's like i gotta meet jr's dad and somebody else piped in Uh, it might have been kate was like you actually got to meet his mom (laughs) i'm like you gotta meet both of them they're They're both characters no doubt Apple don't Apple don't fall too far from the tree. <laughs> Give me that baby. <laughs> Your mom. I actually scrolled through those pictures the other day when South was little. Yeah, give me the baby. Yeah. So we. Uh, long story short, to reference uh, that reference is, uh, Jr's mom came to a show right after we had our our son who's three now, and she was going through the bus going, "Give me that baby. Give me that baby." <laughs> she, she wanted to hold that, wanted baby. that baby. So. <laughs> Good stuff, good stuff. But yeah, like you said, going back to that, talking about Laney, thank her for coming on, and, and um, Austin Dillon for coming on last week. And y'all know, throughout the season, we're going to have guests from all different types of entertainment and sports and different stuff on with us. Um, but I, I, I enjoyed having that because you know, it's cool to have the legends that everybody knows about that everybody can go find their discography of all their records and seen them on the TV last few years or years ago when they were, you know, this and that. But, uh, I've enjoyed having on some of these younger guests. Um, not, I mean, you know, not that they're babies or they, you know, but having on Heath Sanders last season and then having Laney on now, somebody who's people that are on their rise and putting their first albums at and, and really kicking off and seeing the reaction that all the country music fans, um, you know, give them and all the love they give them when they come out. So I, I enjoy doing that. And I'm thinking we, we should probably have a few more young guests on because uh, I know a lot of our listeners have chimed in since we had Heath on. one just made me think about it. I'm sure we'll have it with Laney that may have not known about him yet. And afterwards, as soon as they hear it, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is on this. I'll never not listen to this because I'm kind of that way. And uh, unless you have somebody to turn you on to that, uh, you won't know. You don't know how to find it. You know, especially now in quarantines, we're not hanging out and, you know, passing the iPhone around or the iPod around, the phone around, sharing music we've heard and things like that. You know, and when you and I were growing up and impressionable lads, um, you had radio DJs that would play you stuff that wasn't necessarily on the charts yet. And nowadays, the way it is, there's really just not a lot of that. And there's so many ways to find music. So, you know, I know the highway and things like that, but to to have a direct somebody you know say hey no i like this check this out what you think and then have an honest conversation about it or have somebody be like man thank you for turning me on to that you know that's my, one of this this song off that is my new jam right now or something yeah so. and it, it, it's cool to be able to like you said turn people on to stuff especially because mm-hmm. i'll be honest with you we're not gonna have anybody on this podcast or i'm not gonna post anything about anybody that i don't truly like i mean that's just exactly it's just how i am um yep. and so if we say hey this person's good we truly believe it i mean yeah and and yeah nobody so, there's no <laughs> there's no pluggers getting paid there's no way to no, pay we're not getting paid this. for no, this, this is, i mean with all sincerity we, it's just like a hang session and so and, uh y'all are hanging with and, us. and also by the same token we're not going to talk about anybody or have anybody on rather that it's not good people I mean, no. it, it just no. like they could be the greatest of the great, but uh, buttholes, and we <laughs> we ain't gonna have them yeah. on. But uh, but no, uh, Laney is just one example of of many, and Heath, as you mentioned, and yep. um, so I enjoy that, especially I guess on the back 
nine of my career being able to turn people on to stuff that I think's mm-hmm. great and that they would enjoy. And and that's not to say you're going to love everything. I mean, everybody has their own taste, but uh, at least we we truly believe what we're saying and and yep. we're throwing our opinion out there, you know, regardless. Yep. And so. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate her coming on, um, and may, look may forward even to a, a lot more uh, guests upcoming. And one of her Mount Rushmore uh, picks might be a future guest. We're working on it right now. I don't know where you were. Go- I don't know where you were going, yeah. but no. But that is that's a good point. That is a good point. Uh, one of those off that list may end up being a guest of this podcast. Hell, they all may end up being it, except for Buck. That would get Buck right. these days. But uh, but no, I was going to say we may even have a little surprise uh, for you guys next week. I don't know yet. We may have so I'm not going to drop any names or anything. But may have a surprise guest next week, and they may or may not be another new artist that we want y'all to know about. So and speaking uh, on the tuned. on the other side of the coin, we also have a, an upcoming guest. I don't know if it's two weeks from now or three weeks from now. You, Jr. booked it, <clears throat> but uh, a guest who's a member of one of the biggest rock bands of all time, um, yep. uh, certainly in the last twenty years or so, um, but probably of all time. Uh, yeah, they're they're they in they're huge. Years huge, from now, huge, they'll be huge. looked back as one of the biggest. And they yeah. just had a new album come out, and a guy that we're we've become friends with um, is a member of that band, and. And it's outside the genre, so I think that'll be kind of interesting for folks to to hear from yep. from him, too. So, yep. yeah, we got a lot of good ones up, and then and and and, and if we don't have a guest on here, you get me and JM. So that ain't a that's bad it. deal for you. That's that's you getting your money's worth right there, ladies and gentlemen, because this is absolutely free to you on everywhere you go. If find we don't it, have a if we if we don't have a guest, you just get the shit show. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. But you but know, it's guys, entertaining, you know, ain't it? Right. Yeah. And and like I said, it, it's free. You get you get what you pay for every time because it's absolutely that's free. Right. Wherever you listen to podcasts, go on there, click like, subscribe to the Justin Moore podcast. Y'all go to YouTube and watch us. I know we're not much to look at, but Laney's pretty, so y'all can at least <laughs> look at her today. Justin's wife is pretty. She was on here, so um, y'all go make sure to look at that on YouTube. Uh, click the notification button that way you'll you'll know as soon as that comes through every week as well and also remember always use the hashtag justin moore podcast when you're uh hitting up justin um justin cole moore on twitter instagram and all that good stuff or jr the handler on twitter and instagram uh use the hashtag justin moore podcast that way we'll know you're sending us questions and comments y'all please keep sending i'm not gonna do any today but i've got a little list going of some good ones i'm compiling we'll drop some of those next week and also remember if you go to justinmoremusic.com and go to justin's merchandise page and use the discount code Justin Moore hashtag Justin Moore podcast in the discount code section uh, you'll get 10% off all your merchandise and I know we had uh, a few people say they had ordered some merch and haven't heard back from our merchandise company last week I told them I said the south is in snowmageddon I apologize they, everything was shut down it, last week it's never happened it's never happened before never what, what so we had in the south last yeah. week and they're when they're so located just, in the south so right so be patient that they'll all get, they'll get that to you asap that's that's a rarity that that goes down because normally they get it out real quick so um just be patient with them but y'all use that hashtag justin moore podcast when you buy some swag and you'll get your discount there and no and no shocker this week because we had a really good guest i'm on vacation we'll have a really good shocker for you next week um yep. and thank you again to founders for being a part of this podcast the all day ipa um so good so good. I'm gonna go have one as soon as we get off of here. But uh, yeah, well, let's do that. I'm yeah, gonna go. Gonna... I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my adult vacation. Um, it's always good to talk to you, buddy. We'll we'll see Absolutely. you here in a couple of days. We're going to Nashville. Um, yep. And Record... uh, yeah, recording a stream that we talked about last week, and uh, we will update update you guys again next week on the Justin Moore podcast of when you can actually go get that stream and watch it and that whole bit um get all the info for that get all the info for that um go to laneywilson.com thank thank her again for being a part of this and uh i'm gonna go drink cold beer and ski down a mountain all day i hope you guys have a great day out there and uh we want to say how much we appreciate you listening and or watching this god bless you guys y'all have a a wonderful day and rest of your week. And we'll see you next week on the Justin Moore podcast.
Absolutely. Yeah, I want to drop real I'm gonna I'm instead of the snow, I think I'm gonna go over to the beach here this afternoon and look around at the beach a little there bit. There you go. I'll never do that. But uh before I want to get out here, I didn't do it last week. I want to drop my D- DVD of the week. And this week's DVD of the week is The Resurrection of Jake the Snake, uh starring our good buddy Mr. Diamond Dallas Page. This is a documentary about how Dallas comes in and basically saves the legend Jake the Snake Roberts and uh Scott Hall, aka Razor Ramon. So if you haven't seen the resurrection of Jake the Snake, go to uh, Netflix or any of those stuff and get that watch that that is a great powerful uh, documentary about motivation and and how you can change and, and get it together and uh, this it's life-changing really so y'all go check that out that's my DVD of the week and uh, after that I'm gonna do my reading and we'll see you guys here next week on the Justin Moore podcast yee yee cheers y'all for any of you first-time listeners out there at the end of each of our episodes Uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, The book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Wisdom and knowledge. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. Proverbs 1.5. When I was very young, getting a college degree was looked upon as a way to assure a good job and a bright future. Not as many high school graduates went to college because college was expensive and the scholarship opportunities were not as plentiful. But most of the ones who did go majored in fields where qualified workers were needed and did benefit from their education. But nowadays, with government programs and numerous scholarship opportunities, almost anybody who wants to can get a higher education. Unfortunately, so many of them are majoring in obscure fields where unemployment opportunities are limited or non-existent. All the the diplomas they receive represent is several years out of their lives. Please don't misunderstand me. I believe in education. But how many philosophy majors can the workplace absorb? Why doesn't whoever is helping them decide what to study realize that? Why end up with a degree that's good for nothing except for hanging in a frame on the wall? It's a sad thing to see an overeducated young person clerking in a grocery store or flipping burgers. Knowledge is one thing. Wisdom and common sense are another. They work well together. Let's all make the day count.